Newcastle United lost 1-0 at the weekend against Manchester City in a game that I think we all knew was going to be a tough one. But still, that hasn't stopped a minority of the fan base criticising some of the Newcastle players. And Bruno Gomeres has responded and he didn't hold back, uh, telling one fan that he has a short, stupid memory. Uh, we will get into that in this video, as well as the fact that Newcastle have brought in their fourth First team signing this morning, Lewis Hall is now officially a Newcastle United player, along with the fact that Newcastle inadvertently announced the new Adidas deal that will be on the front of Newcastle United shirts next season. Welcome back to Toon Tuesdays. This is your weekly roundup of Newcastle United news. Every Tuesday, we bring all of the week's news into one helpful video. So if you're not subscribed, be sure to do so. Loads of content coming out right now as Newcastle finish off this transfer window and we make our way into the season. As I mentioned, we did lose 1-0 against Manchester City at the weekend. We all knew it was going to be a tough game, as I mentioned. Uh, and generally speaking, I thought we did okay. Um, there was quite a lot of build-up to the game. I think you know, Pep Guardiola spoke quite glowingly about Newcastle after the game, saying that he'd made a lot of changes to his own side. If they'd played the way they normally did, he reckoned he would have lost against Newcastle. And I think they just had the better of us. I, you've got to remember, they've just won the treble. They won another cup on Wednesday night, you know. The hope was they had a few injuries. They were they were playing late in their, their midweek game. Could we try and capitalise? We just didn't quite get going. Um, Eddie Howe really spoke about how he was building the lads up and we we had to be on them and they were just that little bit better than we were. Uh, look, we were, it was 1-0. Um, a loss isn't great. It would have been nice to, to really have to got into them a little bit more, but yeah, they're a good side. It was a tough game. We move on. We move on to Liverpool this weekend back at St. James's Park. That's the thing. Playing Man City any time of the season is going to be tough. Doing it early in the season when we can try and get at them early on before they've really started to get together. The thing is now we've lost a game. We need to bounce back quick because we've got some tough games all coming up in a row. And I will be doing a full Liverpool preview later in the week, so I won't go through it all now. But to try and bounce back with another win or, or really try and get into them this weekend... I think it's important. Um, so as I say, we will talk about that later in the video. Someone who will be available for the game this weekend is Lewis Hall. You can let me know down below if you think we could potentially see him start his first game for Newcastle. I would I would say it's unlikely, but it's it's not impossible. I don't think Dan Byrne necessarily had the greatest game at the weekend. Having said that, I don't you know I don't think it was the greatest game for any of any of our players. Um, having said that. It's still great to have that little bit of extra option at left back. It has been confirmed that it is a year-long loan deal and that it will be um, an obligation to buy Lewis Hall at the end of the season. There's a lot of talk about FFP, available funds. Basically, Newcastle wanted to buy a left back and we didn't have... <sighs> Despite the fact we have the richest owners in the world, we didn't have the available cash to go out and buy him right now. You could look at it and say 28 plus 7 million is the reported fee. Is quite some fee for an 18-year-old lad. But we're looking at what we're doing with Livermento. We're looking at what we're doing with Isaac behind Wilson. You're looking at, you know, Elliot Anderson, by the way, who came on in that Man, Man City game. It was really, really good. That's the thing. You can talk about some of the negatives in that game, but there were some positives too. You know, I thought we had moments where we did look good, we just weren't able to, to make the most of them. 1-0 in it. You know, Man City are beating people 5-6-0 every other week. You know, the fact that we could have been a free kick, a corner or a penalty away from getting something out of that game, I think is definitely something to take, take from it. And as I've mentioned, Elliot Arneson coming on and, and looking really good is something that we can definitely take going into this Liverpool side. Hopefully, some of these players can, can step up and show what, what they can do. But yeah, Lewis Hall, happy to have you question mark is is that the end a week left to go till the end of the transfer window could there still be a little bit of something something to appear before the end of the week you can let me know down below um we saw you know what happened with Isaac last time around we're done we're not getting anyone all of a sudden 70 million on Isaac I think it might be tough for us as we as we've literally seen 
you know, if Chelsea could have had any money up front, I'm sure they would have taken it. So the fact that we have actually paid, you know, well, nothing, and we'll, we'll, we will pay them at the end of the season, I think shows that we were, we were pretty much running thin on where we could go. Having said that, players are being linked away from the club. He, um, Isaac Hayden has been heavily linked to a move with a few clubs, QPR being one of them. There's been talk about the fact that Manquillo's actually often um, are trying to get a move over in Spain. Would that release too much money in terms of transfer fund? I imagine not. I think Manquillo would probably go on a free, to be honest. I think if Isaac Hayden left, it wouldn't be for much. What it would hopefully be is moving some of the wages out of the club. That, of anything, that's what I'm hoping to see. Oh, yeah. I would love to see a new signing, don't get me wrong. I think centre-back's a position that we could still deal with. But if we aren't going to do that, I think to try and at least move some of the players who aren't in the squad out of the squad so then we're not paying them all season, that money that we save all season, or at least till January, could maybe be money that we could try and spend a little bit, little bit of in January. By January, we've had... The Champions League money coming through. We've had more money for um, for seller coming through. We've, we've had maybe the fan zone starting to get into action. And hang on, that's bringing a bit of money in as well. That maybe by January we could have a little bit more. So yeah, we'll wait and hear on on the transfer side of things. But generally speaking, it's great to see Lewis Hall in the squad. And just a quick moment in this video to say a big thank you to all of the channel members and patrons. We had two new patrons over the weekend, Alison and Harry to go along with Ian. So three patrons on there now, building a small little community over there. It costs five pounds a month. It helps build the channel. There's extra podcasts, videos, and just conversation and chat about Newcastle and everything else. So if you'd like to help support the channel, uh, it would be much appreciated. Thank you. Um, link is in the description. Let's continue with the video. Adidas was inadvertently announced by Amazon over the weekend. Uh, Newcastle's a new sponsor for next season. Did a video on this yesterday, so I won't go into it too much. But very excited. I've said I'd love to see the return of two and top one today actually I, I would love to see the granddad collar return some people saying they'd love to see it back some people saying no it's a it's a new era leave it leave that where it was let's get cracking with some some new designs for the club but regardless i think adidas is the one that everybody kind of wanted to see. i've seen a few people say you know that i would they would have maybe like to say nike or something different but yeah, not for me i think adidas was the one there's been a great relationship between the two brands over many years i think a lot of people were sad to see it go first time round, and we'll be very happy to see it back i think if they want to make a big bang in the club shop well first of all have enough kits in that they can actually sell them unlike Castor, who sell out in 12 hours and then can't Imagine trying to make money and people are literally banging on the door going, I want to buy your merchandise and going, oh, we haven't got any left. There is none. You know, so first of all, Adidas, can I just quickly say they made 300,000 kits for the announcement back in 95. May I suggest they double that for this new one? Because I think everybody will, it's, it's going to literally fly. Uh, and if they want it to fly recreations of the granddad collars i think would just go absolutely ballistic to be honest but i can totally get why people would say that was where we loved it that's where we will remember it people have still got the kits are still very popular now well let's go for a new direction either way they're gonna they're gonna sell and i think one of the big things isn't just the money that's made on the door from the shirt sales it's the actual sponsorship. We don't know the figures yet. I think there'll be reports on that in due course. I'm sure Manchester United making 90 million a year off Adidas. If we made half of that a year, that is straight away absolutely crucial to money we can spend on players and, and everything else that goes with the club. So yes, very happy days to see Adidas back. Cannot wait to see the kids. Can't, I can't wait to see the training gear. The, the, some of the old school Adidas training gear is just elite level. I can't wait to have a, a wardrobe just f full of it. Not that it, over, not that it isn't already, to be honest. But a lot of it's the older stuff. You know, I've, I have started buying, obviously, the kits in the last season or two with, with the new owners coming in, but I hadn't for a while. And, and even then, some of the stuff that the, the Castor has made hasn't been my favourite. I want the raincoats, I want the jackets, I want I want the, you know, the, the 90s big baggy shirts. I'm not sure the players will want to wear them. They'll be absolutely boiling, running around the pitch. But for us to wear it on the match day, in the sun, granddad collars on, what more? 
could you want? Uh, well, what Bruno Gomerez would want is for the players to maybe get off his back a little bit after the loss against Manchester City, as he did not hold back this afternoon with his responses on Twitter. As I've mentioned already, I think, to be honest, the fact that any of this has happened, I would say is a massive shame, actually, because I think the my, my majority of Newcastle fans... And look, you can have both views. It doesn't have to be, oh, we yeah, we lost against Man City, oh, well, who cares, kind of thing. And, but you, and you don't have to be, we lost against Man City. That is wrong. That was terrible. You can be in the middle. Like, I was disappointed that we lost against Manchester City. I don't think any fan wasn't disappointed we lost a game. You know, we could lose against anyone. We could lose against, you know, the World Eleven. I would still be um, disappointed. But you can lose in certain ways. And I think it was quite clear that Man City were just a bit better than we were on the day. You know, we, we had a game plan. We tried to chase them down. I think Man City had the better of us on that. Our press is incredible. And when we can hit players quickly and don't give them a chance, we break them down. Man City are the first team we've played in a very long time who, when we've ran at them, have had the capability to turn around pass, run after them, turn around pass, turn around pass. They kept the ball so well. They evaded our press. I think that's something that Eddie Howe needs to take to the, back to the training room and go, OK, because once they, once they sussed us out in that um, press... Our players sort of kind of looking around a little bit and going, what do we do? Do we, do we just keep running after them? Like, what what happens at that moment? Do you go, OK, we're not getting it. Let's sit back. Let's." And Eddie Howe said that at half-time, you had to give him a boost and go, right, lads, you did kind of fall off a bit in the end of that first half. Because as I say, do you just chase the ball around all game or do you change the tact? And, he, and, and it did change in the second half. We, we came back out with a burst again and we did play better at the start of the second half. So that's, that's just something Eddie Howe to work on. But generally speaking, they were a better side. However, I've having said that, despite I like to think that I'm quite down the middle in my opinion, I think we lost, I'm disappointed, but you can still take positives. You can still see why we lost. It was against an amazing side. There is a small minority who maybe were quite critical of the team and maybe over critical of the team. And because of that, clearly the players have seen it and Bruno Gomerez did not hold back in a tweet he posted earlier on today. So I, I will read what it said. It has been deleted as of now. Um, he said, is this serious? We are in the Champions League. Football we lost against maybe one of the best teams in the world. And we have a big win and lost one game. So that's right, we did just beat Villa 5-1. Coming off the back of that and lost, yeah, you can't win them all. And Man City are a good side. Um, support in the best moment is easy. Short, stupid memories you all have. Look what you've done for this uh, team in the last... Look what we've done for this team in the last year and a half. Which was quite swiftly deleted, by the way. Um, <laughs> I think Bruno's actually had quite a lot of support back on that on that tweet. I think it's quite interesting that, uh, and I was shocked to see it, and not because I think Bruno's necessarily wrong in what he said. I think players should stick up for themselves if they are getting slated, and I do think there's a bit of probably language in that as well. He does use the word um, all of your stupid memories and, and I don't think that was obviously, I would like to think it wasn't aimed at all of the Newcastle squad because I think of anything that he's had loads of praise off the back, <laughs> off the back of that one but, but certainly to kind of say, you know what, we have and we have done very, very well. It, it's We don't lose many games, you know, at the moment and hopefully it stays that way. But yeah, Bruno's had his say. So you let me know your thoughts on Bruno's comments down below. Um, was he right to hit back and go, you know what it is? We're actually doing all right. We've had one bad game. Give us a break. I think it's probably, to, to sum up that, give us a break. And I think that's probably fair. And, and we move on to a big game this weekend against Liverpool. The last thing you want to do is be annoying the players. You want them to be in full, fine fitness and right in the head to go and to give it their all again this weekend, which I've, I've no doubt they will. So let me know your thoughts on Bruno's comments down below. Let me know your thoughts on Lewis Hall joining the club. Could there be a, a late twist in the transfer window? Um, I hope so, but we'll have to wait and see. Thank you guys for watching. As always, drop, drop a like and subscribe. Be sure, to, um, be sure to check out my Patreon already if you haven't. Enjoy your night. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you later.